Well, for their reaction to this week's events in federal politics, I'm joined now by three MPs from the different parties. Karina Gould is a Liberal MP for the Ontario riding of Burlington. Karen Vecchio is a Conservative MP for the Ontario riding of Elgin, Middlesex, London. And Sheila Malcolmson is the NDP member for the BC riding of Nanaimo, Ladysmith. All three of you, welcome to the, the show. Thanks for taking the time. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Okay, let's start with you, Karina Gould. I mean, this has been a week, yet another week. It's not the first time where much of the debate in the House of Commons has been debated about the has been dominated by the issue of cash for access fundraising events. Um, why is the Prime Minister still going to these small, relatively small attendance, fifteen hundred dollar a head events? Uh, well, look, Martin, I mean, as has been said numerous times in the House, uh, we are following all of the laws and all of the rules here in Canada. Uh, you know, parties fundraise, that's a normal practice here in Canada. And federally, we have some of the strictest laws across the country, if not in, in the world, for what we do in terms of how parties raise money um, and how we engage in the political process. Oh, right, but I mean, I, I was looking, this has made it to the BBC, this has made it to uh, the New York Times, the issue... Uh, uh, and we saw this week this event with some rich Chinese Canadian and Chinese millionaires and even billionaires. Um, the appearance, though, I mean, we keep getting back to the Prime Minister's guidelines, which are, is beyond the law, and the guidelines saying there should not even be an appearance of conflict of interest. Well, Why bother if it's going to raise these inevitable questions about attendance to these sort of events? I mean, I think it's also really important to note that only Canadians can donate to political parties, uh, and it is a little concerning that the opposition is putting Chinese in front of that, because these are, as you said, Chinese Canadians, and so these are Canadian citizens and permanent residents, and they're the only ones that can donate to political parties, and those are rules that were put in place by the previous government, rules that we abide by, and I think it's really important to note that you know no laws have been broken and that we continue to uh, follow all of these laws and to make sure that we uphold what these really strict fundraising laws are. Okay, Karen Vecchio, uh, you've been going on this, but I mean, it was raised by the Liberal government yesterday. They gave some examples of Conservative cabinet ministers who attended similar fundraising events. I mean, I think it was $500 a head for Joe Oliver, $500 a head for Jason Kenney, something $15 a head, uh, $1,500 a head for uh, Chris Alexander in the last year of, your, of the Conservative government. Uh, why is this so different? Well, I think we should go back to last year's election when we talked about uh, when we were out there campaigning. And the one thing that the Prime Minister did was talk about being this new and transparent and accountable government. Uh, I was, you know, it was great. When he brought out that accountable and transparent government document that we discuss all the time in the guidelines for the ministers, it was very clear his expectations of the ministers. But we have not one time seen that they're going to continue or that they've even respected this document that he wrote. So it was really written on a blank piece of paper and no one took it seriously. Um, the Canadians, I think at the end of the day, the day, Canadians expected different. Canadians wanted more and they wanted, they wanted something different. And I respect that's what we saw in the last election. But when they were referring back to saying, well, that's what you guys did, hey, if you're trying to be different, you're absolutely missing the mark here. Okay, Sheila Malcolmson, what do you make of uh, this for the NDP? This is such a target-rich field, but, you know, it's really unfortunate. We've got all kinds of things we'd really like to be debating in the House. So this is dominating. I'm astonished that the Liberals haven't uh, heard the tone from the public and haven't changed their ways. The uh, Ethics Commissioner even has said this looks, looks like cash for access, and it's a little questionable. Absolutely, this is a violation of public trust. The Prime Minister made a very... Uh, Sunny Way's uh, campaign commitment uh, that they would do better than the law to now hear one minister after the next say we're meeting the law and quote the same speaking lines ad nauseum is, is hard to take. This feels like Sunny Way's is turning into pretty shady days. <laughs> Um, and, and if you don't mind, I'd like to add, I really, I do respect Karina, but what we saw is when we're talking about, yes, Chinese Canadians, but the one person that was identified was a Chinese Canadian that is a liaison to the Chinese government. And so I think we cannot forget that tie when we're having those conversations, especially when we see the support by this government for the Asian Infrastructure Bank, we see this investment banks, and we also are talking about trade deals with China. We have to recognize that there is going to be a bit of an issue here. Okay, Karina Gould, you're going to go into caucus meeting next week and uh, would be surprised if this 
doesn't come up, seeing as it continues to come up as an issue, um, do the people around the Prime Minister have a tin ear? And the reason I'm saying is that we have. I mean, I printed this off a month ago. The, the Prime Minister's guidelines, there should be no appearance of preferential access uh, accorded to individuals or organizations because they made financial contributions. So even the appearance, I mean, it's clear in his guidelines. How long do you think this will go on and will we continue to be talking about the apparent conflict of interest? Well, I think as Sheila said, there are lots of other things such as public policy that we could and should be talking about. Um, but of course, the question period is dominated by the opposition. So that's what uh, ends up as the topic of the day. However, that being said, uh, this, is, this government is the most open and accessible and transparent government that we've had in Canada in decades. There are so many, con no, their ministers are out talking to Canadians, they're consulting on a wide range of topics. We are very accessible. I mean, as members of parliament, as ministers, as cabinet, uh, there are many different venues where Canadians can reach out, can be part of the conversation and can be engaged in this. Uh, with regards to, you know, one of the particular things that Karen said, uh, you know, there was, uh, there was an issue raised about um, an individual's bank who had been approved, but that bank was approved by the previous finance minister under the Conservative government, Joe Oliver, in July 2015. And so there is a lot of stuff that's floating around here, but we need to make sure we stick to the facts and we stick to what's really happening and so that we can have a clear conversation with Canadians. Right, but I guess, I mean, I guess the question is, though, and you must ask yourself the same question, if... I mean, if I had a friend who was a cabinet minister and he or she was attending one of these things and it's a small gathering of 15 people and those people pay money to get to the gathering, even if there were arguably no conflict of interest at all, the appearance is of paying for access. So the appearance is there. I'm just wondering when the government is going to decide that this is not worth the grief. Can you answer that one? Well, I mean, the, the question is, I mean, then we have to look at fundraising more broadly. But, I mean, this is a practice that has gone on for a long time. We have very strict regulations in place. We have a strict lobbying commissioner that has to, you know, any time someone wants to lobby the government or have access to or speak with a cabinet minister or a member of parliament, they have to write it down. We are transparent. We know who these who people are and when they're talking and why. And I think that's really important to maintain that framework that we have. Okay, a quick question across the panel then. Maybe if we do go to the wider question of political party fundraising, uh, are we getting to a point where we should be reconsidering maybe then the return to taxpayer funded per vote funding for the parties to avoid this need for fundraising? Uh, I'll start with you, Sheila Malcolmson. Uh, what do you think? I'm very interested to hear what the public has to say about this. I don't think the public really appreciates how much taxpayers still subsidize political parties through the election rebates. That's, um, I think, a, a point we need to explain better. But it's certainly, when I go back to the riding, I'll be listening whether people feel that it's unseemly for these decision-making ministers to be basically prostituting themselves is what it looks like. Um, and whether this does tell us, you know, really, let's just not put the ministers in this awkward position, uh, get back to the real business of the House and look at if everybody had a little bit less money to spend and campaigns, you know, actually it would probably be a great sigh of relief across the country. Uh, it, it, it's a very active our, our discussion that we need to have. And, and obviously what we've got happening right now with the Liberal government is not tenable. Karen Vecchio, you're, you're, I mean, you've been associated with the Conservative Party for the duration. I mean, you're the previous government, the Harper government, was the one that phased out the uh, taxpayer-funded, uh, well, basic funding for the parties. Is it time to maybe uh, revisit that issue and having a stable funding for the parties well, for the taxpayers? One thing you noted, and it, it brought, up, brought up about Joe Oliver and Chris Alexander doing uh, fundraisers and having people there, uh, stakeholders perhaps, I know one thing because one thing I did do from 2004 until 2015 is I did do a lot of fundraising. So when we felt that there was going to be a conflict of interest, so for instance, if there was an organization that was coming to a fundraising dinner where business could be discussed, they were removed, their money was refunded, they were not attending. And that's something that we put as a policy of the party. Shelley Glover was known to have uh, taken one of her um, events and actually cancel it because there was going to be a conflict of interest that was going to occur and she was aware of it. Those are things that we also need to do. So I respect what 
Sheila's saying. I think party fundraising, though, is very, very important. It's uh, also putting the, uh, your money where your mouth is and, and getting people out there and doing the work. Now, when it comes to pers uh, the votes and subsidies that come to the party, I believe that Canadians do not like the amount of money that taxpayers are, are spending on political parties. And so that's something that we should, it should and, and we can look at. Uh, but at the same time, I believe that members of parliament and parties should be out there working and at the end of the day if somebody is saying this person's working really really hard and i believe in the conservative party or the ndp party or the liberal party or green party i want to contribute we should not take that away from canadians okay last question on a different subject karina gould we saw a major announcement uh, any other week it would have been a huge announcement uh, in terms of news coverage and that is the decision to buy 18 uh, jet fighter aircraft super hornets on a interim basis until the government decides five years from now uh, in an open process on the uh, final replacement for the aging F-18s. Uh, so 18 jets bought on an interim basis. Why could the new jets not be bought now? I mean, why are we waiting five years to get an answer for a, a final decision on the eventual replacements? Well, I mean, this is simply to fix the mismanagement of this file over the past decade. Uh, you know, the Conservatives had 10 years to look at this, and, and they didn't, and we're, we're starting almost where we were, except in a worse position 10 years ago. And so one of the reasons why we're purchasing the Super Hornets is to make up for that capability gap and to ensure that our men and women in the and the armed forces have the equipment that they need to carry out their duties and to, to do it in a way that is safe and secure and is going to provide the needs that we need here at home but also abroad. Uh, and the fact of the matter is is that uh, military procurement does take a while and so we need to make sure that we do the proper due diligence, that we uh, get everything in place and so that, that does take a long time but what we are doing, what the Minister of Defence has announced is to make sure that we are purchasing those Super Hornets in the interim to make sure that we can support our men and women in uniform to carry out their activities while at the same time making sure we get the right equipment for their needs moving into the long term. Okay, Karen Vecchio, your response. I mean, this is a, this is a dossier, this is a file that really did not have a very fast action on the, on the part of your former government as well. It's been inherited from your former government. Your reaction to the decision this week? You know, I don't know what point to start off with. First of all, we heard today and I saw that the government has muzzled the people who are part of this procurement. So that's one of the concerns that I have when we talk about accountable and transparent government. Another thing is that the Canadians or the Canadian government has been investing in the F-35 and we've seen billions of dollars invested into the Canadian economy because of, uh, because of that. But I think the big thing, and, and I'm taking this down to Sparta level. Uh, my husband sells cars and I always know he will say to me don't buy a car when it, you know that next year they're not going to be producing that car because when you go to get that car fixed the parts aren't going to be there. So if I was buying a car that in 2014 was going to be stopped being made I would know that those parts shortly will start being discontinued and that's what we're going to see with these CF-18 fighters and that's a huge concern because it's like buying something that's no longer there. So we have to recognize the American government has come out since the F-35s are ready to be flown. We should be putting our money where that is and making sure we have those investments. At the same time, having this open and transparent uh, competition, that's fine, but we've just thrown a whole bunch of money and we don't even know how much we have now thrown into the CF-18 for a short period. And that's a huge concern I have. Okay, on that note, last, uh, last answer goes to Sheila Malcolmson. What do you make of the announcement this week? Liberal Tory, same old story. <laughs> I mean, it's terrible. I, there, there's a real erosion of public trust on this. It's not transparent. It's a huge, huge amount of taxpayer dollars. Uh, nobody can figure out why the direction keeps changing on this. And, uh, and we need to have our men and women in service uh, safe and flying, um, flying good, safe equipment. But my goodness, um, how... What does this make the government look like that uh, over you know, decades now we just haven't been able to get this job done? It's very discouraging. Okay, all three of you, I want to thank you for taking the time. Uh, Karina Gould, Karen Vecchio, and Sheila Malcolmson, thanks for speaking with us this week. Thank you very thanks much. Thank you. Have a nice weekend.